we get this PCE number out this morning. This is positive news for the Fed. It looks like things are cooling and slowing. That's what Jerome Powell wanted to see. But on the flip side, you had that uh, first read on fourth quarter GDP mm -hmm. was pretty strong. So that's indicating there's growth out there. The, the data is conflicting and people at home still feel like things are tough as those layoffs are mounting. So where are we and what will the Fed do? I mean, maybe I'm too optimistic, but I think this is as good as it gets. I mean, we had a phenomenal growth reading yesterday. I mean, come on, over 3% economic growth. Mm -hmm. Remember, most economists thought we were going to have zero growth at the beginning of last year, um, which just kind of blows my mind. It's been so good. And then on top of that, you still have a strong labor market and inflation is coming down to the Fed's target on a six month basis. We're already at 2% inflation. Mm -hmm. That's their target. I mean, the Fed's won um, against a lot of skepticism. So I think we're in a point now where I hate to use the word Goldilocks, but like from my perspective, this is as good as it gets, Jackie. When guys okay. start using the word Goldilocks, I get nervous, though, because I think it's definitely <laughs> I want to make you nervous. Gonna be. But you've been on this sort of bullish on the broader economy for a long time, so you're being consistent there. Let me ask you about big tech earnings next week. I want to know what you expect, but I also want to know a little bit about your hardware plays, because we sort of forgot about <laughs> hardware after COVID, and you think it's coming back a little bit here. Yeah, so kind of old school, new school, right? So, I mean, tech obviously is already having a phenomenal run again this year. The Magnificent Seven is already up 4% for the year. Extrapolate that out for the rest of year. That's a pretty good return on your money. Um, you know, I think bottom line is, look, tech earnings probably going to come in for the year over 45%. That's why those stocks are up over 50% over the last year. Mm -hmm. And even going into this year, uh, the broader market's going to have like 11% earnings. The Mag Magnificent Seven is going to do something like 20% earnings. Wow. So it's going to be good. The number's going to be phenomenal there. Um, my only concern there is valuations are getting really right. rich, right, if you look at it on a four basis. And that's sort of where I want to go. I think a lot of us and a lot of viewers at home remember the dot-com bubble era. And I want to be careful not to use the bubble-ishness on this program. But at that time, technology was worth, what, 40 percent of the S&P 500. And now we're up to about 37 percent in terms of market cap. Does that not feel bubbly-ish? Mm. I mean, bubblish is my favorite economic term. Thank you. It's a very technical it's a good gum, CFA too. It's a good gum. And term. a good gum, yes, yeah. No, I think it's true. I mean, this is why Tesla is down 25% for the years, because valuation got too high. Now, to put in perspective, if you looked at tech stocks back in 2000, um, we're partying like it's 1999 now, no pun intended. Uh, a little, little uh, you know, a we like school puns. term. We, yeah, yeah, we like puns. But basically, you're at 50 times forward earnings at that point in tech, which was extremely high. We're 30 times forward earnings right now in the Magn Magnificent Seven. I think they can go higher here, but their momentum plays now. And when that momentum stops, it usually doesn't end well. So I would urge investors right now, this is a good time to diversify your money. Don't mm. get seduced into that momentum trade. I think it is getting bubblicious. Can we go back to the data and how people feel? Because I still think there's a disconnect there. And I hear you on this Goldilocks scenario. And I think that's what the administration and Jerome Powell, they love these numbers. It's making them look good, like yeah. their policies are working. Um, but the policies aren't working for the average American. And these layoffs are bothering me. In this month alone, we've seen companies, big tech companies yesterday, everybody you're hearing is starting to lay off people. That's that's not good for the consumer. That's not good for growth. And so I'm wondering, to a certain extent, are we in this kind of soft landing recession? Are we going to look back on this period and say, that was it? This is it. We're in it. Well, you make a really good point, because if you look at last year, for most of the year, you had inflation beating out wages, right? And that's what we had in the 70s. We had stagflation where, yeah, your wages were going up, but inflation was much higher. If you look at the last six months, you're actually starting to see that turn where wages are starting to outpace inflation. And again, if we think that like shelter costs, which is a lag, is going to continue to come down this year, which means inflation is probably keep them, continue to moderate. The bottom line is when it comes to labor, we're still in a labor shortage in the U.S. I know tech is one specific sector, but if you extrapolate it out, we've only have like growth rates of like a half a percent in the labor force. Baby boomers are retiring in droves. Mm. And I even argue that AI is like a necessity. We're going to need AI to help us with the labor force because we just don't have enough people. That's going to keep labor tight and wages going higher which is my, probably my big bull case for this year, is like, okay, wages like, are going to uh, go up. That makes sense. The guys are bold. Yeah, you no. can't no, stop but, this bull. But it makes sense. You know? <laughs> you've, got, you've got a case to back it up. Appreciate it. Ryan, thank you so much Great for stopping by and joining us.